What's in that? I think. No, her things. <laughs> What's going on, Jacob? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, geez, are we lazy? Can we hear it again? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> okay, it's Monday morning, October 5, 2020. Uh, we didn't have commentaries last week. Um, what happened last week? So many things happened last week. We didn't have commentaries. Anyway, <clears throat> huh? What's that? What is that? I was too lazy. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> anyway, so today, the start of the week, Monday, um, <clears throat> we have a very long gospel today. It comes from St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. Okay, it's a long gospel, so we'll, uh, we'll not read the whole thing, but we'll just describe what, what happened here. Okay? So there was this scholar of, a law, of the law, possibly a Pharisee or a, a scribe or you know, somebody who is steeped into studying the, uh, the law. Okay? What is the law? <laughs> We're going to talk about it. What, what, what does... What does it mean here? What is, what's it all about? So, you know, in the Jewish tradition, they, they study the, the Old Testament. They, that's their school, right? They study everything about the Old Testament. And, uh, and normally, when they say uh, the law and the prophets, that's basically what it contains, what they study. It's about the laws of Moses, the Ten Commandments, and the prophecies uh, that all the prophets um, that were sent by God uh, gave them, which is basically a prophecy about Jesus Christ. Okay? So there was this student, scholar of the law, who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do? To inherit eternal life. Now Jesus knew that he was a scholar of the law. So the obvious question to him is. Well what is it that your studies tell you? What, what is written in the law? And then of course. Being the scholar of the law that he is. He starts rattling off. Right. Oh, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. So he was able to summarize what um, the whole law was all about. And he replied, you have answered correctly. Do this and you shall live. Do this and you will have eternal life. Right? Live there when he says you shall live means you're going to have life everlasting. Live forever. But then this guy wants to trick our Lord and says, but, you know, uh, he wanted to justify himself. That's what the, the St. Luke says. So he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Okay, then our Lord gives him the example of uh, the Good Samaritan. The, the the Samaritan who met a, a a guy who was a victim of muggers on the road, and he took care of him, put him in an inn, took care of him, and spent money in order to have him, you know, recover. And uh, our Lord said, "Okay, that is that's your neighbor. Right? Do the same with others." Okay, but let's explain this whole story and parable. And so that we understand what it might mean for us. So, why do you think did our Lord say or question this scholar and say, well, what does the law say? What do you read? Okay. What is the significance of that kind of a question from our Lord? What does the law say? What do you read in law? 
about how you will have eternal life, how you're going to live forever in heaven, how you're going to merit heaven. Okay, the explanation is this. The so-called law, which for us we know as, you know, the Ten Commandments, right? The laws of God that He has given to Moses. The laws of God are the standards by which we need to abide by and align our life to so that we can go to heaven. So these are the rules, the regulations, the instruction manual, so to speak, that God has given us. And he says, if you just follow this, you'll be assured of eternal life. You'll be assured of going to heaven. This is the path. If you follow these rules, you'll get there. This is your GPS, right? This is your map. You follow the instructions in the GPS and in the map, then you'll get to heaven. Your journey is going to be smooth. You'll get to heaven. Okay? That is the minimum requirement to go to heaven. That's why that's the question that our Lord asked this scholar of the law. What does the law say? What's written there? Say, so, okay, you, you, you know it very well. Okay, so follow it. Follow it and you'll be okay. Right? That's the minimum. Now, you see, you might ask us, as we were talking earlier in, on the breakfast table today about some customs in other countries like India, where, uh, uh, I don't know if they still do it now, but apparently some, some uh, communities um, uh, when, when, when uh, a husband dies, uh, the wife uh, is, is uh, f encouraged or if not thrown into the fire pit where they are cremating the remains of the husband, right? Because uh, according to some of these cultures, well, the wife is a property of the husband. So if the husband dies, the wife has to go with him to death. Uh, this little demonstration or example will help us appreciate why God had to give us the Ten Commandments. Because prior to the Ten Commandments and the way that God has willed and created mankind, He has actually written the law written the instruction manual about how mankind should operate in our hearts. He has given us what's called the natural law. <clears throat> okay? It is like the instruction manual about how mankind should live his life so that he reaches heaven, so that he acts according to his nature as a human being, a moral human creature of God, and reach heaven by the use of his own reason, okay? simply by discovering his own nature and appreciating and understanding his own nature. By trying to do that, we can reach heaven. We can go to God. See? Okay? But the problem is, or is, yeah, there is a problem. The problem is because of sin, because of original sin, that rationality and the ability to discover the natural law that God has written in our hearts becomes impaired. Becomes impaired. It, it was destroyed by sin, by original sin. And so, because of that, it has become very difficult for us human beings to discover the natural law, to understand the natural law, and much less abide by it and follow it. And that is why God, in His wisdom, has ordained that that natural law be explicitly conveyed again. To us be explicitly in fact written up for us 
And that was what the Ten Commandments are all about. See? That is what he gave Moses the, concretely to, 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 um, to encapsulate in ten commandments, in ten rules, rules of life, everything that has to do with human nature, everything that is really incorporated and part of the instruction manual that God has written in our hearts. Okay? So that is why when this student of the law was asking our Lord, how, how do we I'm go to heaven? Well, he says, well, what does the law say? Okay? What is your instruction manual? What does that say? It's all there. It's all written for you. You don't need to ask me. If you are really a, a scholar of the law, all you need to do is, list, is, is go back to that instruction manual, go back to the law, and you're going to find uh, the, 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 the instructions of how you're going to heaven. Right? And it was summarized in this format. Love God above all things, with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. So that is the summary of what is written in the law. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's appreciate this. Let's understand it. That you see, uh, uh, following rules, following the commandments, following uh, the moral precepts that the church is asking us to follow, is really something that is not an imposition on us. Okay. It's actually already written there in our hearts. It's already actually really part of who we are. Okay? And which we have to be able to discover on our own. But because our reasoning can be impaired, well, God found it expedient and necessary to write this up, to actually make it explicit for us so that we don't even have to guess. We don't even have to wonder anymore. It's all written up. Follow the commandments. Follow what our Lord has explicitly handed down to us. To be our guide. To be our moral compass in reaching heaven. But I want to point out also besides this, the last part of this commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Because sometimes it might be easy to comply with the first part. Loving God. Right? And a lot of people would proclaim love for God. And they love God with all their strength, with all their mind, with all their heart, with their, with their whole being. But when it comes to loving their neighbor. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> when it comes to loving their neighbor, they start becoming choosy. They start becoming picky. They tend to love only those who love them back. And what did our Lord say? Well, even sinners do that. Right? If you only do good to those who do good to you, even sinners do that. Even the pagans do that. If you only love the people who love you in return, well, even the sinners do that. So, what are you doing extra? How are you distinguishing yourself from those who uh, do only good for others because th those others do good for them? Well, you know, the distinguishing factor is this. If you know how to love other people the way you love yourself. Why does our Lord give us that standard? That you should love other people the way you love yourself, regardless of who these other people are, regardless of their race, their color, their creed, their 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 inclinations in life, their profession, their whatever it is. You have to love other people. And that means all, everybody, the way you love yourself. <clears throat> That's a very tall order and a tough standard to follow. Why? Because we normally love ourselves too much. 
right? We love ourselves too much. We, 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 we don't like any harm to happen to ourselves. We don't like any uh, bad thing to happen to ourselves. We always want the best thing for ourselves. We always want the most pleasurable, comfortable thing for ourselves. And so our Lord tells us, okay, is that what you like for yourself? Now you do that to others as well. You do it for others. And that is the best proof that you really love me. If you can love other people the way you love yourself, that is the proof that you really love me. Because as our Lord said, if you cannot, if you cannot love the things, the ones that you see, how can you say that you love the one you do not see? Eh? We do not see God. God is not physically present among us. We love Him and know Him in a supernatural way. But you see, we are creatures made out of flesh and blood. We are material beings. So our Lord uses our neighbors as the standard for our love for God. He says, if you can love your neighbor... The way you love yourselves, then that is a good indication that you, you really love God. Okay? A good indication you really love God. So, you know, let's ask ourselves that question all the time. And every time we, we, we have an opportunity to serve others, to do good to others, to be of service to them, to, to lighten their burdens, to help them in, a, in, in, in things that they, that they do every day. Let's ask ourselves that question. Am I, can I go out of my way to be of service to my neighbor, to my brother, to my sister? Because by doing so, I am loving God. And if I cannot do that, then I really don't love God. Eh? If I cannot do something for my brother, for my sister, for my neighbor, if I'm not willing to serve, I really do not love God. So that has to give us pause and that has to make us stop and think. You know, I, I, I cannot say I love God if I cannot even help my, my brother or my sister with things that they need from they need help in if i cannot if i cannot go out of my way to serve others even if they don't ask me to okay if i only want to sit back and be comfortable with with you know uh, i'm just going to scratch my belly here i don't want to get involved with your mess i don't want to do anything for you uh, that's your problem I don't... well then i don't really love god See, I don't really love God. We have to love God to the point where we're even willing to lay down our lives for the others. The same way that God, our Jesus Christ himself said, right? No greater love does man have than to lay down his life for his friend, for his neighbor, for his brother, for his sister. That's the standard. That is the standard for real love for God. So we have to ask ourselves this question. And we, we really don't need to die for another person just to show our love, right? But the little acts of service that we do for them every day is enough. It's a big proof that if we can do these things for others, we're doing it for God. Remember what our Lord also said, whatever you do to the least of your brethren, you did it for me. Eh? Our Lord himself said that, whatever you do to the least of your brethren, you did it for me. That is how to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Okay. Okay. That's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. Hope to see you again tomorrow and the rest of the week. Bye-bye.